Hey guys, how's it going? It's Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be working with LWRP, which is the lightweight rendering pipeline. And I'm going to show you how to create a project from scratch and how to select the pipeline as well as how we can go through some of the objects. So let's go ahead and create a template. So I'm going to use 2018.2.17 F1. We're going to select the LWRP template. On the previous video, I showed you how to use the HDRP. So we're going to use the LWRP in this demo. So let's go ahead and do LWRP demo. And if you're wondering why you should use this, is this is more meant to be for mobile games or VR games that are more lightweight on graphics. So if you're wondering why use this versus using the HDRP, that is one of the main reasons. So I'm going to wait until the project is created and then we'll look at the some of the features. There we go. All right, guys, so this is the template. The in all the assets are, you know, they, they're part of that template. So what I want to do is I want to cover some of the components that make up this template. So this is going to have, of course, a main camera, a directional light. This template comes with the post-processing effects, so I'm going to cover those as well. I want to first look at some of the components that make the LWRP. So I want you to go into File. I'm going to go into Build Settings. We can go into player settings and then let's just call let's just close build the build settings and then if you click on graphics you're gonna see that we have you know this is normally where, where you set the rendering the render pipeline settings so in this case this is using by default the lwrp high quality settings so if i click on it and go into the project you can see that right now it has that set so if you wanted to use, you know, high high quality uh, graphics on the, you know, as far as like the L LWRP, you can select this asset. But if you want, you know, more of a low quality, lower quality, you can select this one. Or if you want a medium quality, you can select, of course, the medium quality. So what is the difference between them? The difference is going to be, you know, some of them might have, you know, high resolution on shadows or various settings. So I'm going to walk you through some of those settings. Let's go ahead and select the high quality. So just so you know that this is where you set the, you know, the different graphics. You can also create one of these and then just customize it on your own. And you can do that by going into, I believe it's under assets. And you can go into create rendering, lightweight rendering pipeline. And then you can create your own pipeline asset. We're, we're not going to go through that right now, but that's how you could do that. So if we go into the high quality, which is the one that we have selected, I'm going to, I'm going to just zoom in here a little bit so that we can see you know what's happening and then in fact i'm going to go ahead and go into the hierarchy and then just center my camera around this area because i want to i want to pay attention to the shadows also some of the perhaps some of the reflections that you see here that are coming from the reflection probes in the scene so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back into my project click on the high quality assets this is where we're going to be controlling some of those settings so I told you that this is where you can control some of the quality, you can control some of the lighting, also shadows and some advanced options as well as some general options depending on the rendering type that you want to use. This one is using forward rendering. You can also change it to custom and it gives you a file that you can update. So I'm just going to leave it as we have it. And so some of the settings that you can change in here, you can change the quality you know, whether to use HDR or not. If you want to use anti-aliasing, you can select that. Right now, this is set to 4X, and I'm not gonna change that, but some of the things that we can change, of course, we can change whether we wanna cast shadows or no cast shadows. If you didn't wanna cast shadows in your game, you can just, you know, uncheck this right here. You can also tell it whether to do, the main line is gonna be per pixel, if it's gonna be disabled. The shadow resolution can also be modified here. If you didn't want to go as high as that, you can change it and see how we can get, we're getting some pixelated shadows and that's because the, the shadow resolution is pretty low. I'm going to set it to 2048 and that gives us a really smooth shadow. You can also control, you know, if you want to use this per object limit, if you want to cast shadows on the additional lights and also some of the resolution there. The, the other options that you have is you can also tell it whether to, you know, what the distance is going to be for the shadows. If you want to use two cascades versus four, four cascades, or if you don't want to use cascades at all, then, you know, that that will change in the scene. So I'm going to change it to four cascades as we had it. And you can also change, if you change the normal bias, as you can see here, we can control, 
you know, how the shadows get affected in the scene. You can see how that is affecting the scene. So you're gonna undo that, and then also the dead bias. So you can see how the shadow is affecting the bucket, also the shadows on the, so it gives you, it just gives you a lot more control over how the shadows are getting casted in the scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo. And then, you know, if you want to use, you know, like the edge, the like shadows that are not soft, then you can just uncheck this, and this is gonna be set to hard shadows, as you can see here. We're getting more of, of flat shadows on the, so this one has edges. And if you wanna use soft shadows, then you can enable that. Of course, it's gonna affect performance, but if you wanna, you know, create your own profile, or if you wanna use the low quality, like the low quality doesn't have soft shadows, you can do that as well. And then you have some advanced options. The other things that I wanna show you here is how, so you can see how the reflection probes are affecting, are affecting the scene. And you can also use the reflection pros with this rendering pipeline. And if we go into the hierarchy and I have the reflection probe selected, you can see how the reflection probes is affecting the, the legs of this table. And if I were to, you know, uncheck that, then now we don't have any reflections. And so you can use reflection probes as well in here. And we have one in here, we have one on the side as well that is affecting, you know, some of the metal areas in this side of the scene you also we also have one on the on the very back so the last thing that i want to show you is post-processing effects in the lightweight rendering pipeline you can also use them so if you look at the template the template comes with this post-process volume you can also use this is going to be the post-processing that we're all familiar with this is the one that is part of the that you use in the standard in the standard rendering pipeline so this has the, you know, the profile and, and if you haven't used that, make sure that you watch one of my videos on post-processing effects because it's gonna tell you how to set this up. If you're familiar with that, then you'll be familiar to what I'm talking about. But once you have a post-processing volume, you can set the weight, you can set the priority. This is so if you want to have multiple volumes, you can blend them basically. So in this case, the the default template that I just we just created comes with the color grading, it comes with the blue and also vignetting. If you wanna add more effects, I'm not gonna cover the effects in this video because I cover it on a different video, but I'm gonna just mention that you have access to ambient occlusion. You can also use auto exposure, chromatic aberration, depth of field, grain, and then, and then so on. So you can use those in here. I'm just gonna show you that if we change some of these settings, it's going to be affecting. So the scene, if I wanted to use, you know, different type of exposure, if I want it to be darker, you know, you can do, you can do that as well. If you want to have, you know, the, the hue shift change, then, you know, maybe more of a cyberpunk type of, type of scene, you can do that as well. So I'm not going to change it. And then also, if you want to change the bloom on this default, you can see how that is affecting the scene. And then you have a lot of different settings in there. Also with the, with the vignetting, if you want to increment the vignetting, you can change that as well. So that's everything that I wanted to show you on this video, focusing on the beginner tutorials of LWRP. If you guys have additional questions, please let me know.